my shoes. Just a minute. <laughs> a capital ship for an ocean trip to the walloping window blind. Get out of here. Sixteen cents a piece, that's fourteen times sixteen. Two twenty-eight. No, two twenty-four. But you're pretty close. I have grand papers! Oh, drat that cheap. Look at him, he's trying to sneak off the old rest. Slow down, grand fellas. I see you. <laughs> You carry it for me. Well, I suppose you want me to get things in town. Yep, here's the list. Michael, get the ration books. <laughs> oh, the bus. I'd better hurry. Oh, no, there's plenty of time. And you're forgetting the crab. Oh, Tessa, dear. Bannock's Fish Market. They're worth 16 cents apiece. And if he offers you 14, don't you? I'm know? not going to haggle with a fishman. My pension is due today, and we'll have plenty of money. Not if we're having a soldier to dinner Sunday a week. It's Sunday week tomorrow, Grand Feathers. No, it's seven days from tomorrow, Chief. Gee, I really ought to go with you, I guess. Fine, let's make a day of it. No, Michael will go. You're going to miss it, you're going to miss it. Hurry, Grand Feather, you're going to miss it. Remember, every penny counts, so don't let him buy anything foolish this time. I won't. Michael, put those crabs under the seat or somewhere. All right. How come Tessie ain't going to town with y'all today? Too busy, I guess. She's about the busiest little woman on this whole route. I know why she didn't come. Why? Because she hasn't got a dress. Sure she has. No, she hasn't. Not a decent one. It fell apart when she tried to die for Kenneth Norman's party. Oh, that's why she wouldn't come with us. Michael, would you know a good-looking dress if you saw one? I think so. Why? We're going to buy Tessa the best-looking dress in town. Oh, she doesn't want one. Do you think you could sell those crabs to Bannock's fish market? Nope. Why not? Because you could get a better price. Oh. She's a fourth husband. She does? We'll duck into the post office and I'll get my check. Oh, Michael, take the crabs outside and warn me if you see her coming. What is this? 
Yasmin and Osborne brawling in the streets. She tried to steal our crabs. Too bad he didn't get them. Are you hurt? No, but that kid's always picking on me. Well, what are we standing here for? Let's go. The crabs! Oh, the crabs! The crabs! Well, bring them along with you. Where are you going? Over to Norman's dry goods store. We're going to buy Tessa a new dress. Agatha! Into the USO, quick! Good morning, Mrs. Dobson. Good morning, Mr. Osborne. Michael? Good morning, Mrs. Dobson. Oh, boys, if you haven't registered, will you please do so? I saw you come in here. No mistaking that majestic head of yours. If he wore a toga, he'd look like one of the handsome Caesars of ancient Rome, wouldn't he? You're making him blush, Agatha. How cute. <laughs> How cute. Now, about those crabs. They're not crabs. They're family heirlooms. Very valuable. Of course they're crabs, aren't they? You've got to let me have them. I'm entertaining. That's exactly what I'm doing. Is he, Michael? Yes, ma'am. When? Sunday week. Oh, well, mine's this Sunday, tomorrow. Oh, Helen, send him a nice boy, a nice hungry one. Send who a nice hungry boy? Mr. Osborne, of course. Oh, is he? The USO acts as liaison between soldier and uh, civilian population, I believe. Yes, of course. I am a civilian, am I not? Certainly. Be kind enough to have a soldier at my house a week from Sunday. Very well. Just fill out the card. Thank you. I'm having fried chicken, of course, but I want to start with crab. I'll pester you until you sell them to me. I'll give them to you, ma'am. Grandfathers! Oh, I do thank you. And I hope your party's a great success. Now, be kind enough to have the soldier at my home at six bells. That's 11 o'clock, according to you land lovers. That will give the lad plenty of time to take a plunge in the surf off my private beach before dinner. Good morning, ladies. Come, Michael. I'm leaving, too. Agatha, just a minute. Now, uh, how many are you having tomorrow? Eight. Oh, couldn't you make it ten? There's a B-17 crew here, and I want to keep them together. Oh, of course I'd love to. Goodness knows I have plenty of chicken. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> and now are these lovely crabs. That man. A dreadful man. information. They didn't have salt pork, so I got bacon. There's Michael's sale, and this is for your sister. It's just like Christmas. Oh, grandfathers, you didn't. Open it, child. Open and see. Goodness. Do you like it? Yes, but... <laughs> we can't have you run around those pants with the soldier coming to dinner. I don't think he is coming to dinner. Oh, Tessa, why? You said he could come. We're not such a wretched family that we can't have an occasional guest. Why, 10 or 12 extra was a daily occurrence in my father's house. This isn't your father's house. It certainly isn't. Better take the dog outside, Jeep. Mary, go with him. Yeah, run along, Chief. Hand it over. Huh? Whatever's left. Oh, it's not as much as you suppose. Prices are high. They always are during a war. Hand it over. Oh. What happened to all of it? How much did you get for the crabs? Well, as a matter of fact, I, uh... I, I gave them away. You gave them away? 
I showed you my budget. So much for food, so much for the payment on the place. You seem to understand that we could just about make it this month if we were careful. Oh, now, child, we'll get along. We always do. You take things too seriously. Somebody has to. Oh, by the way, I saw Kenneth Norman today. Fine fella, Kenneth. You didn't ask him to come over. See him tonight like a good girl. Give him another chance. I settled that once and for all. <laughs> when you set your jaw that way, you look just like your grandmother. All I did was to send you in town with a basket of crabs and just look what happened. Oh. I spent all the money I counted on for the soldiers' dinner on presents we don't even need. You need a dress. I'm taking it back on Monday. You can't. It was on sale and you can't return it. I'll never wear it, I promise you that. <laughs> I could have sent Michael in town with those crabs and... Where is Michael? Huh? Isn't he here? What, didn't he come with you? He left word of the movie house for me to go on that he'd see me at home. If that young man... Don't you be so thoughtless. No telling what's happened to him. Tessa! Tessa! Wait a minute, Tessa! Thanks for the lift, Mrs. Butterfield. You're welcome, Michael. And don't forget to tell that grandfather of yours never to speak to me again. Yes, ma'am. All right, Samantha. Michael? Michael, where were you? In town. I was so worried. So was I. Is he home yet? Come on. Did he buy a lot of things? I tried to stop him, Tessa, honest. But it didn't do any good. I know. We must remember that Grandfather never had to worry much about money and responsibility. Till it was too late for him to learn. I guess that's why he's like Jeep or some other little kid. Yes. You wouldn't have to think much about money now if it weren't for us. Another winter here, Mary will be strong again. Jeep will be ready for school. We can move to some bigger place where I can get a job. And I can get a paper rock. Yeah. And hey, Michael's getting late. Better hurry. Ouch! What happened to your hand? Let's see the other one. You have been fighting. Honest, Tessa. Well, how did you get your hands like this? Scraping fish from Mr. Bannock. He had a big order for Drew Field. Here. Oh, Michael. 45 cents an hour he paid me. That's a man's wage. Mr. Bannock said I was a good worker. That any time he needed an extra man, I'd get the job. I guess it won't pay for all the things that Grandfather's bought. But will it pay for your dress, Tessa? Yes, it will. It'd be kind of nice to see in a dress, Tessa. A new dress. I'll wear it tonight, just for you. Race you home. Give you head start and still beat you. Bet you don't. Go! <laughs> Can I help you, Tessa? No, I don't think so. Mighty pretty in your new dress. Don't the children think so too? Mm-hmm. Where are you going? For a walk. I'll tell Kenneth when he comes.
professor. Why do you come to this gloomy place anyway? Because they have such wonderful music. Shall we? Oh, listen, Tessa. Don't you love the orchestra? I don't know. I've never danced to it. Don't you remember the grand opening in 25? Tessa, this place was never finished, and you know it. Look, there's Mrs. Butterfield. She says that's an aigrette in her hair, but I recognize the tail feathers of her pet rooster. Oh, well, stop the clowning, will you, Tessa? You've got to listen to me. Come on, not here. And ever since that first day when you were buying the houseboat from Dad, I've wanted to take care of you. But, Kenneth, I don't... Don't have... say it, not you. Oh, think of the fun we can have. We'll go to Miami for a honeymoon. We'll actually stay at a luxury hotel. All the Norman brides get a diamond bracelet. My mother gave me this. And clothes. You can have your pick of the store. Not cheap little dresses from our bargain counter. We can live in one of Dad's houses till after the war. And Michael and Mary and Jeep? Well, Tessa, this will be hard for you to admit, but they'll be better off. Really, they will. We'll send Michael to school in Virginia. He can be with boys his own age, have his own horse, all kinds of sports. It's really wonderful for a boy, I know. We can get a competent woman in to take care of grandfather, Mary and Jeep. They'll have the right kind of food, regular hours. The way you put it, I seem selfish to refuse. Marry me, Tessie, you'll never regret it. Oh, I'm all mixed up again. I want to talk to Grandfathers. All right. I know that he'll say what he told me this afternoon. What? That you have a life of your own to live. You do like me, don't you? Oh, yes, a lot. An awful lot. Why not? Because if I did, it'd mean I'd made up my mind to marry. I'll try to make it up that way, will you, honey? Good night, Kurt. Good night, Mr. Osmond. Oleander's got a bud. Think she's finally going to boom? Never mind that freak bush. You sent him home early enough. Mm-hmm. I only loved him more. Your grandmother didn't love me when we married. That came later. Of course, things are different with girls nowadays, but... If I only could have Mary and Jeep with me. Well, you don't expect him to fill the honeymoon cottage with other people's children. They're not other people's children. They are to the man you marry, child. Do you think they'd be better off? We'd have security, which I failed to give them. We got you hogtied, Tessa. This is your chance to be free. Take it. I'm not so sure I would be free. I don't mean my obligation to Kenneth and his family. It has something to do with you and the children. Well, Kenneth's going north tomorrow. I'll have a whole week to make up my mind. Well, what about the children and the plans they've been making for Sunday week? Well, the dinner for the soldier. Well, the best thing to do is just Tell Mrs. Dobson that it isn't convenient to have him right now. I'll see her Monday. That's a very humiliating thing to have to do. I'll tell her. Oh, no, you won't. And end up by inviting five more. I'll attend to it. Oh, it would be nice to have the party. In case I do decide, you know, about Kenneth. Yes. Sort of last celebration. Look back on and remember. There's that look of your grandmother's again. What are you thinking? We're going to have that soldier to dinner. How are you going to manage it? I don't know, but I will. Was that one of the children? I didn't hear anything. About that dinner, you know what we could do? 
No, what? Oh, no, not Miss Easter. She'd probably be as tough as the bosun's mate. Oh. Well, you don't intend to let her pass on of old age, do you? I'd feel like a cannibal. I wouldn't. I'd enjoy it. How else are you going to give a soldier a chicken dinner? I don't know. But I'll figure out some other way. What's this? Aren't you asleep? Your legs ache again, dear? Can I come in with you tonight? All right. Come on over. In you get. Got something to tell you. Not even the boys know yet for sure. Why? We really are going to have that soldier for dinner. Aren't you glad? Oh, yes. We better go to sleep now, dear. A lot to do this week, cleaning and planning. Good night, dear. Good night. Tessa. What? I've been remembering Mother and Daddy. I'm glad. You must always remember how sweet and kind she was. And how much fun we had with him. I was remembering the day they went away. Were you, dear? I've known for a long time, Tessa. They didn't just go away. They were hurt in the automobile. They died. Why does everything have to die, Tessa? Because dying is a part of living, dear. For all we know, it may be the best part. But it's a secret we can't know until we experience it. It's like the books Grandfather brought you. You can't know what's inside until you open them. Well, they're full of colored pictures. Pink castles out of coral and starfish and wavy green grass at the bottom of the sea. Beautiful things, aren't they? Things you could never imagine just from looking at the outside. That's all we see, Mary. Just the outside of death. The cover. But where did they go, Mother and Daddy? I can't tell you that because I don't know. But sometimes I think they didn't go anyplace. When Michael gave me the money he earned that afternoon, I saw Mother's goodness looking out of his eyes. And when Jeep toots his whistle and laughs, his daddy teasing and having fun. And right now, with us, it's like when Mother and I used to talk things over. Only, it's as if I were Mother and you were me. I want to be like you when I grow up. You know so much and you make everything right. Easter. Try and lay one every day for the cake for the soldier. And don't you be scared about what Grandfather said. Nothing can hurt you when you've got this. You just go sit on my lucky shellfish when you get scared. What's Miss Easter got to be scared of anyway? Grandfather wants to give her to the soldier. What for? Dinner. Oh. But Tessa told him she'd figure some other way out. Mary! Mary, come here this instant. Tess is calling you. Miss Easter laid the first egg for the cake. Well, put it in the icebox, and I'll need that little tub for bluing. What am I going to scour my shells in? I don't know, but get them out of that tub. Michael, that's enough on those rugs, and don't dirty the curtains. I'll give them a couple more wax. No, take them down. I'll need the line. But it often appeared when the ball had been all you two can think of to do. I found an E string in the bottom drawer under some socks. That'll be a big help. 
Haven't I told you before not to get on that bed with your shoes on? Now run along outside. I want to help. Well, you're not helping much on that bed. Here, put these outside. Dog, you're in the way. Now look, that ticking is old. Now be careful not to tear it. Okay. out of here. You told me to empty it. Not right in front of the kitchen door, I didn't. Jeep, you and Mary go wash out that truck. And get something else to put those shells in. Michael! What happened? Oh, I was just taking the carpet off the line. Oh, look at my curtains. Michael, they're ruined. I know they won't stand another washing. I just can't trust you with a thing, can I? Must be stuck again. We'll have to shake it again. think this is a picnic? Well, it may be for you, but it certainly isn't for me. Here I'm trying to make this miserable shack look decent. And what do you do? You rip and ruin every miserable rag we've got. Ah, oh, gee, Tessa, we was just trying to help. Well, don't. I don't want your help. I don't need it. I'm better off without it. when the soldier comes. What can I do, Tessa? Mary, put that egg in the ice box. When are you going to make the cake, Tessa? When I get back from town. Mary and me's going to pick the berries. Pick plenty. Where's Michael? his boat, I guess. <laughs> Now, Tessa? Mm hmm. The sandwiches and milk in the icebox for your lunch. And don't do anything about it. You know, until I come home. Now, now, we agreed that was my worry. Now, I mean it. Grandpa. There's no need procrastinating. But I may be able to. To make money out of buttons? That's the only way you'll ever make enough to get another cheese. Shh. Never mind how I get the money. I may not. But promise me you won't do it until I get back. Oh. All right, all right. Bye-bye. Now remember. Goodbye, kids. Bye, Tessa. Bye, Tessa. Come on, let's get the berries. You late, Zach, again? 
I was remembering what Michael said yesterday. We expect too much of Tessa, he said. We gotta help ourselves more. How worse mayor is this morning? What if she can't save Miss Easter? Huh? Goodness, I wish there was something I could do. I wish, I wish. I know, I got it. Hurry, people, let's start picking the bed. What time is it? Must be nearly supper time. Here comes another car. I bet you. I'm hungry. Eat some more berries. I want to go home. Just one more car, Jean. You've been saying that all day. I got the stomach ache. I want this. I want to go home. Please don't cry, Jean. Here comes another car. It's going to stop. Hello there. Hello. Would you like to buy some berries? Oh, heavens no. They're giving a hives. Itch all over just looking at them. What's wrong with him? He's hungry. Why, the poor little fella. He hasn't had anything to eat all day but berries. We can't go home to his cellar. That man, that dreadful man, sending helpless babies out to earn the very bread he puts in his mealy old mouth. It's Miss Easter he wants to put in his mouth. If I was speaking to him, I'd certainly give him a piece of my mind, as it is, I have a notion to report him to the authorities. I love her so much. I raised her from an Easter egg. We just can't eat her tomorrow. We just can't. Well, I should hope not. Come here. Samantha, give me that big fryer. It's right on top there. You mean this here one for the Norman? Yes, we'll give them a stewing hen. Here you are, you poor babies. Tessa says we're not to accept presents from strangers. Oh, well, I hope we won't be strangers for long. I'll tell you, give me that little box of berries there. Samantha likes them, and I'll leave them for the cross. I don't like no berries. You like them, Samantha. Here, 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 here. That's enough. Now what's wrong with him? Oh, he feels good, because we got a chicken dinner for the soldier tomorrow. Oh, I see. Chicken dinner for who tomorrow? The soldier. We're going to have one for dinner tomorrow. We're going to have a soldier tomorrow. Are you sure? Oh, yes. Grandfather signed a card for one at the USO. Well, last Saturday. We've been getting ready all week. Thank you, Mrs. Butterfield. You're welcome, Chief. Go on, Samantha. Thank you. Oh, Samantha, this is terrible. Yes, and Miss Norman, she ain't gonna like it one bit getting a stew instead of a fryer. Oh, that. I'm thinking of that card I tore up. All children expecting a soldier tomorrow. It's awful. Yes, ma'am. What can I do? You heard him. They've been preparing for him all week. Yes, sir. I know. I'll stop by the USO and tell Mrs. Dobson. She'll find a soldier for him. <laughs>
blueberries? Yes, and we sold them. We got a big fire for the soldier. A what? But goodness, did you get one too? Well, yes, but how in the world? Look what I got. Oh, tell me, not a chicken. Uh-huh. Mr. Bannigan let me clean all his barrels. I bought a bone for the dog. Just a bone. No points. Hey, what goes on here? Where'd this come from? We bought it with Barry. For the soldier. Did you get the other one? Mm-hmm. Where'd you get the money? None of your business. Where's Grandfather's? Here. Not in the hatches, lads. Hear that thunder? She's gonna blow a gale. Michael, secure your boat before the wind blows it away. Okay. Jeep, stow the deck chairs. I'll close Easter shed. Good. She's blowing, she's blowing, and the glass is going down, getting blacker and blacker. North by east, hurricane velocity. Grandfathers? Grandfathers! Don't pretend you can't hear me, come here. Is that Miss Easter? Who? What? No, certainly not. Well, if it's not, then who? Why? What? As Where? you aptly remarked to Michael just now, it's none of your business. Did I pry into your affairs? Did I ask you where you got the money for your hen? I did not, although I have a pretty good idea, since you're not wearing the locket and chain given to you by your mother, your dear mother. Did I reproach you for selling a family heirloom? I didn't sell it. I'm getting it back when your next check comes in. Be that as it may, I respect your privacy. Is it too much to ask the same courtesy be accorded me? Oh, never mind the act. If that's not Miss Easter, where is she? Easter! 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 Come in, dear, before it starts to rain. Easter! Miss Easter's gone and I've got to find her! Easter! I asked you not to do anything till I got back. But, Tessa, I give you my word. Oh, you're hopeless. How are the children ever going to learn moral sense with you around as an example? You fib all the time. Sometimes I even think you'd steal. I'm not going to tell Mary, either. You can do your own dirty work. I thought you were asleep an hour ago. No, I decided to use Grandma's old Irish linen tablecloth and family silver after all. I thought we sold it. Oh, not all of it. I saved a few pieces. Have the boys quieted down? Mm-hmm. I don't know what they'll do if it's still raining tomorrow. Especially Michael. He's just set on taking that boat out. Oh, I think it'll clear up. Uh, Mary asleep? No. I think she believes what I told her about Easter. Being scared of the storm and running away, don't you? No. She would if you helped out. Shh. I don't fib to the children. Anyway, it wouldn't have done any good. She put her fish bone in the nest. Easter couldn't possibly have gotten scared sitting on that old bone. You see what your fibs get you into? Oh, stop using that silly word. If you mean lies, say lies. All right, then, lies. Shh. They're not lies. They're exercises of the imagination, flights of fancy, expansion of the soul. Well, whatever they are, I advise you to tell the truth about Miss Easter. Not to you, never. Shh. Shh. Oh, let me see. Gravy boat, cover terrine for the peas and the potatoes. Mary, are you asleep? No, Grandfathers. May I come in? Yes, Grandfathers. Like for me to tell you a story?
Well, now, Mary, what I told you this afternoon wasn't exactly accurate. About Miss Easter, I mean. But it seemed the only thing to do, so I did it. If only you'd waited like Tessa said. How was I to know that everybody in the family was coming home dragging a fowl? If I'd been consulted as becomes the head of the house, things like that wouldn't happen. All evening, I've been treated like an epidemic. Oh, no, Grandfathers. I guess maybe Missy Easter didn't mind too much sin was for the soldier. But I won't be able to eat any dinner tomorrow. Now, here, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> Shh. That isn't Easter in the icebox. Oh, Grandfathers, please don't tell any more fibs. I'm not. I rode over, and I exchanged Miss Easter for one of Agatha's dressed fowls this afternoon when nobody was looking. Honest? Honest. And now, since we have, as they say, a plethora of chicken for the soldier tomorrow, I see no reason why this rare character can't be returned to our family circle, do you? When you're going to do it? As soon as Tessa stops pussyfooting around, I'm not going to make myself ridiculous for her. Shh. Don't you tell her. This is our secret. Oh, yes. Shh. Shh. Going to bed, Tessa? Yes, Grandfathers. Raining quite a bit out, isn't it? Good night, Grandfathers. Good night. Yeah, well, I can't sleep. I've been having nightmares, seeing things. Agatha Butterfield, did you call me up in the middle of the night to tell me you were having nightmares? No, I want to know if you had any luck. Did you find another soldier for the Osborne family tomorrow? I told you I didn't when you called up after supper. Huh? Well, I did try again. But the camp's practically deserted by now. A lot of them been shipped out and some out on furlough. Huh? Why, of course, of 
course I'll try again in the morning. You suppose the soldier would know enough to take the bus out? Oh, I should think so. Golly, I hope it doesn't rain today. Hope so, too. I just gotta take him sailing. <laughs> Looks like you're catching cold. Oh, can a man sneeze without having a cold? You better have some medicine in your coffee. No, never mind. I don't need any. You certainly do. And I don't want any of that stuff. It's a good thing you don't want any of that stuff. There isn't any. Well, well. When did we use that up? What makes rain ground feathers? Weatherman, Chief. Weatherman predicting sunshine. Strangest thing this morning. One of the chickens has gone from the icebox. How do you suppose, uh... Well, well, how's my girl this morning? The sister's not in her shed. <coughs> <coughs> Get me that shawl for my shoulder, Mary, please. <coughs> Don't worry. I failed last night, but I'll get it back for you. Boy, sit down. Oh, for goodness sake. You're all as gloomy as the weather outside. Acting like a bunch of babies. Remember what Mother always said. If you can't get what you want, you must want what you get. Who wants to have a cold? What if it does rain today? We can have dinner in here. He's probably never even been inside a houseboat. I bet he can hardly wait. I bet so, too. Me, too. It's clearing in the east. Then we'd better start meeting those buses. I'm going to show them my big plan when he gets off. Here, children, come back here. Harry, Michael, come back here. Come back here and finish your breakfast. You want to make a soldier. Come on, we don't They haven't even had their breakfast. Neither have I. Have you made up your mind about uh, Kenneth? Yes. You want to marry him? Yes. It is the best thing for everyone, isn't it, Grandfathers? I'm sure of it. It means breaking up the family. Well, that's life. Old families must be broken up so that new ones can be built. I'm sure Kenneth is the right man for you to marry. Good character, fine family, money. Everything's going to be all right. When are you going to tell him? When he comes home tomorrow. Everything's got to be perfect today. This must be a celebration that children will never forget. A wonderful, happy day to look back on. This time, but maybe the next trip. I'm gonna stand on my head for him. Gosh, I'd stand on mine if it'd help. Well, you've got a schedule on your hands. You're right, Mary. Absolutely right. Exactly what did Mrs. Dobson say when you signed for the soldier? Well, I don't know her exact words. Oh, try to remember, dear, please. Oh, she said, uh, the USO acts as liaison between soldiers and civilians. He'll be here at six bells. That'll give him plenty of time. He's just got to come. He's just got to. Or did I say that? Say, 
this is no bus stop. Hey, Mr. Day. Any luck? Oh, I went by the bowling alley in both the churches. There's not a soldier in sight. Did you call the library? Well, there are usually half a dozen or more there reading, but not today. It's that meddling Agatha Butterfield. Well, you better just tell them definitely this trip there's no use hoping. Yeah, I reckon there ain't no sense in dragging it out. No. Aren't you going to? Go ahead. No, I think I'll wait this time. I'm not going to look this time. Well, you kids might as well give up. There was a mix-up about your soldier, and there ain't no use waiting. Genuine miracle. Come on, soldier. Hi. We knew you'd come. Gosh, we were worried. We've been waiting since eight. Goodness, we were worried. Where have you been? Well, I hitchhiked a ride out here. I was looking for the bridge across this lagoon. I thought I'd take a dip later. We can swim from the boat when we go out for sail. Oh, we can? Who's we? Just you and me. I'm Michael. I'm Mary. We live over there. In that houseboat? Do you wave at all the bombers, Mary, or just mine? Was it you that tipped your wings every morning? Well, not exactly. I'm a waste gunner myself, but I have an in with a pilot. I noticed you kids waving, so I got him to wave back. Oh, I'm glad it was you. It's a miracle. A dog blasted genuine miracle. I never was so glad to see anybody in my life. We've been looking for you all morning. Where have you been all week? On furlough. I went broke, so came back a day early. Know who I am? Sure. You're the kid with a kite, and your name is, uh... Jeep. That's right. Hiya, Jeep. Know why I stand on my head? Sure, because you feel good. <laughs> is this your dog? Yes. What's his name? It don't have no name. I just call it Dog. I always thought if I had a dog, I'd call him Skipper. Skipper? Mm-hmm. That's his name, Skipper. Well, thanks. Hiya, Skipper. I'll go ahead and tell Grandfather and Tessa you're here. Yeah, well, hey, wait, Mike. I scrubbed all my shells to show you. We're eating our fried chickens for dinner. Three of them. Hey, look, this has gone far enough. Whoever they were expecting, I'm not it. Maybe you didn't think so when you headed out here, but you can believe it now. You're exactly it. Wait till I tell him to stop. But listen. I'm sorry, Sergeant, but I got a schedule on my... Come on, you're going to be late. Yes, you'll be late. <laughs> I told you he'd come. Boy, you look swell. Yeah, all but the high water pants. We told you not to wash them in hot water. <laughs> Good thing I didn't wash the coat. When do you meet grandfathers? When do you meet Tessa? And that's our Oleander Bush. It's a freak. Unique. It's a unique freak. He means it don't know how to make flowers. <laughs> come see our victory garden. All right. We grow everything. Everything. What, no spinach? No, we don't like spinach. Well, isn't that great? Sergeant Eric, come see my boat. It's got sails and everything. All right. Well, hello, soldier. Sergeant Eric Morrison. Chief Petty Officer Dudley Osborne retired. Chief. How do you do, sir? Tessa. I'm coming. I want you to meet my granddaughter. Tessa. This is Sergeant Eric Moore. Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming. 
I'm sorry, but I think this... This is one day that you don't have to think. The Osbournes are going to take care of everything for you today. Aren't we, children? Yes, we're going to have the best time. Strawberry shortcake for dessert and everything. You can fish from the boat if you like. <laughs> God. <laughs> I'd better call them all. Oh, no. I know I'll wake up in a minute. Things like this don't happen to a lug like me, so just let me dream on a while. Can we go out before dinner, Tessa? Is it all right for a sail? It still looks like rain. Look, the sun's coming out. And the oleander's blooming. <laughs> That's the first flower we've ever had. The buds all dropped off before. What a pretty color. It stinks well. Smells, Jeep. It smells. Smells. It must have known this is a special day. A very special day. It's a miracle, a genuine miracle. We found one, wandering on the beach. <laughs> Butterfield. Don't be too long. Mustn't be late for dinner. Oh, that's a swell knife. I wish I had a knife like that. Here. It's yours. Oh, no, I couldn't take it. But I'll trade you for it. Gee, looks like I'm getting the best of it. No, you're not. I need a knife just like this. The blade will fit a certain screw in my gun. It will? Mm-hmm. Grandfathers? Oh. For which we are ever grateful. And bless this food, amen. 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 You know, that always embarrasses me. It seems so impertinent, with all the Lord has on his mind these days, to ask him to keep an eye on my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I want him to keep an eye on it. Go ahead and serve, Grandfathers. Right, oh. A piece of the white. And a piece of the dark for Eric. I hope you like fried chicken, Eric. There's nothing finer, <laughs> is there, Mary? Mary is next. She likes the wing. May I be excused? Oh, now, Mary, dear. Please. Now, we're not going to have any nonsense. Eat your dinner. I can't, Grandfathers. I give you my word. It's the ones that Tessie and Michael and you and Jeep got. It's not who, what, uh, you think? <laughs> now, why did you have to say that? Never mind, Tessa, never mind. I'll get her. Sit down. Well, don't forget to bring those things there, Samantha. All right, Miss Butterfield. What's the matter? Is that horrible grandfather of yours been beating you? He's not horrible. Now, Mary, these things happen. Oh, haven't we got enough trouble without this? <laughs> Go away, woman. You're contagious. Oh, fiddle faddles, nothing but the hives. I'd be home soaking him in vinegar if it wasn't for that monster of yours. <laughs> Easter! <laughs> I miss Easter Wander too, huh? Leaning on your cane all the way, no doubt. Huh? What's that? What's that? You heard me. Well, come on, hand it over. I'm keeping it safe for you at my house. Oh, stop scratching, will you? Hello, Miss Butterfield. Hello, Tessa. Oh, oh, look, Miss Easter's back. <laughs> Boy, she's back. Miss Easter's home again. Gee, Michael, Eric, Easter's back. Eric, this is Miss Easter. We raised her from the Easter egg. Looks like some of the dye came off the Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> that creature of yours scared my laying hens out of their wits. Not a single egg this morning, and my prize rooster's a nervous wreck. Who's that? 
Oh, Sergeant Eric Moore? Mrs. Butterfield. How do you do? An old friend passing through? No, I'm at Drew Field. The Osmonds were kind enough to ask me for dinner. Oh, how nice. Won't you join us? No, thank you, Tessa. But I happen to have an extra freezer of ice cream. Chocolate it is. I thought maybe you could use it. How kind of you. Ice cream? Chocolate? I'll take it. Keep it in the shade and look out for the salt when you open it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, boy, ice cream! Put it over here! Chocolate. Nice boy. I want to thank you for the chicken you gave the children yesterday. You gave nothing. It was a fair exchange. I've got the hives to prove it. Well, anyway, thank you for everything. You're welcome, child. Now you better run along to your dinner. Yes, maybe I'd better they'll eat the ice cream first. <laughs> Goodbye. Come again soon. Nobody just happens to have a freezer of chocolate ice cream hanging around the house. Well, I did. And what's more, see that you bring back the empty freezer tomorrow. And don't send those poor little children with it. You bring it yourself, do you hear? <laughs> don't hang by your eyelashes till I get there. I won't. <laughs> but I may come over and give Tessa your cane. Uh, blackmailer. Well, come on, children. Come on, everybody. Before everything gets cold. Yeah, let's hurry up and eat so I can get you the ice cream. <laughs> now then, let's get down to business. Looks like I've got the wishbone, Mary. We'll dry it out, and then later you and I will make a wish, hmm? All right. Hello, Eric. Shh, asleep. It's dry now. Come on, let's make a wish. Well, what do you know? Mary gets her wish. I'm going to put it under my pillow every night. <laughs> know what I wished? <laughs> that you'd come home safe and sound. Well, when I do, I want you to be all strong again. I'm not sick anymore, and I'm not scared anymore. Well, honey, everybody gets scared once in a while. Even soldiers? Well, what's this? I wanted to give you something special, so that you won't be afraid. I don't think I'll ever be afraid again, Mary. I'll put it in my wallet. My, that's pretty. What is it? It's my identification bracelet. Why don't you wear it? Well, I broke the clasp in Miami. Anyway, it's too small for me. Hey, Mary! Come and help us pull this lock in! Excuse me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you have your swim? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Where's Tessa? She's inside changing. So you believe all this propaganda about airplanes winning wars? Well, don't get me wrong, sir. I have great respect for your branch of the service. They've even got some fine flyers. Oh, the Navy has even got some fine flyers. That makes the Navy okay, I suppose. I didn't mean it exactly that way, sir. Your attitude is typical of the younger generation. <laughs> I doubt if you even know what happened in 1898. Oh, yes, sir. I heard of the good ship Raleigh where you left your leg. Huh? What? <laughs> you think that I am an old bag of wind, don't you? Oh, no, sir. Well, I am. Son, the children are all giving you something, so I will, too. The Lord knows I don't give it often. The truth. Not a living soul knows this. But I wasn't shot at the Battle of Manila. No? No. A week before the battle, I fell down an open hatch, and I was in sick bay all through the battle. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of a sailor I was. <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir. I'll help you wash those dishes. Oh, no, I can do them in no time. I was one of the best KPs in the Army. I'll match your heads or tails to see whether you wash them or I do. What do you say? Heads. You lose. I wash them. Careful, the water's hot. All right. Oh, uh, you better put one of those towels around you. Mm-hmm. Oh, a uh, silver first. 
Yes, ma'am. You'll get your cuffs wet. Don't you want to roll them up? Get over that Jeep. Did you know he gave me his whistle? I can't blow it, but he wants me to have it. In the war, he says, when I'm fighting Japs. Stood on his head when I took it. He spends more time upside down than he does right side up. <laughs> like my sister Alice. She used to walk backwards when she was excited about something. Where does she live? Last I heard, she was in Mexico, getting a divorce from her third husband. She seems out to set some kind of a record. Is she much older than you? Four years. Funny how you can drift apart. What happened? Well, when our folks split up, Mother took Alice and I went with Dad. He died when I was 13. Mother'd married again. Did you live with your mother and stepfather then? For a while, but we fought. So when Alice eloped on her 18th birthday, I ran away from home. Oh, well, you were only 14? Well, closer to 15. I was big for my age, too. <laughs> Where's your mother now? Well, she was in Chicago when I enlisted. I had to write her for my birth certificate. Eric. Hmm? How'd you spend your furlough? Raising Cain in Miami. Or rather, trying to. You can sure feel alone in a place like that. Didn't you have any pals you could have gone home with? Oh, sure, but nobody wants outsiders around when they're saying goodbye to their folks. You'll be going over soon, won't you? Mm-hmm. You don't know what a difference it makes having someone to say goodbye to. I wouldn't trade one second of today for all the other good times I've had in my life. Eric? Hmm? I wonder if your mother's been happy. I've wanted that, too. Hey, look at that sunset. Is that orange blossoms I smell? Mm-hmm. Always about this time of day. There's an orange grove across the lagoon. Mary goes over there every chance she gets to listen to the birds. I picked up a baby robin once. It felt just like her hand. I will, as soon as I finish the dishes. We'll help you. I'll dry them. Well, all right. Come on. Grab a towel, Mike. Mary? Here, Mary. Cup for you. Jeep. One for you, Jeep. Tessa won't let me dry them. There are good cups. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we might as well all be in this. Spoon. Tessa and Eric go. 
Come on, children. Let's sing again. Oh, the moon lies fair tonight along the Wabash. From the fields there comes a breath of new mown hay. Through the sycamores wars the candle lights are gleaming. On the banks of the Wabash, far along. I've been thinking all evening about what you told me in the kitchen. About Alice and folks? Mm -hmm. I had a nerve unloading all that on you. I'm glad you did. I guess I wouldn't have, except you've all made me feel like I belong to you. What a family. <laughs> Tessa, when I think if the kids hadn't been waiting just as I walked by... We might never have met. Like Mr. York said, it was a dog blast, a genuine miracle. Was it only this noon? What does it matter when it was? I feel like I've known you forever. There's something you don't know about me. What? Come on, I'll show you. I often come here for a dance when a good orchestra's playing. What do you think of it? Pretty snazzy. Table for two, Gaston. I hope I've got enough to tip him. Well, if you haven't, you can borrow from Mr. York. There he is over there. And doesn't he look well standing on his head? <laughs> I knew you wouldn't think it was silly, pretending. I'm going to do a lot of pretending from now on. Like what? Oh, like as if your family's mine. Oh, you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. Oh, yes, I do. And please don't change any of you. Stay just as you are until I get back, will you? Do you mind if we become just a little less poor? What are you talking about? You're the richest people I know. You've got the kind of wealth nobody can destroy. What did you say? I said you had the kind of wealth nobody could destroy. Nobody except ourselves. Oh, Eric, you've made me understand something. I have? you made me see what's really important. What makes me, me. The family. Oh, without the family, I wouldn't be myself. I'd be somebody entirely different. I don't know what, if, if anything, I'd be building. It couldn't be any more important or beautiful than what grandfathers and the children and I have built through all our times together, good and bad. I certainly would be someone different. Someone I might not like at all. Well, Eric, thank you. You're certainly welcome, but... <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? <laughs> well, this. Your coming to dinner today has determined my whole life. I know now how I want to live it. I'll explain it all to you in the letters I'm going to write you. That we're all going to write you. Jeep will learn to spell on you. And grandfathers will fight the war of 98 with you. <laughs> and Michael will need your advice.
very nice group. Now, everybody, look here and hold it real still now. Keep don't move. <laughs> now, still. Real still now. <laughs> One, two, three. Now, we'll take about five minutes, so just amuse yourselves. I don't worry. Come on, Eric, let's go watch him shoot. Shoot it, Jack! All right. He got one! Here, Tessa, you try it. Oh, I don't know how. Oh, I... come on, it's easy. I'll show come you. Come on! There, now you hold it like that. Look through the sight. When you're on the target, fire. She got one! You're wonderful. Here, you try it, Chief. I better get some more change. My, that's pretty. What is it? My identification bracelet. Why don't you wear it? I broke the clasp in Miami. Anyway, it's too small. Would you keep it for me? Sure. Eric! Here's your picture. Thank you. Uh, oh, oh, Mr. York, come on in. Hey, that's all right. Gee, you look wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful, the 194 bomber commander. Get him back on the field. Right. On the double bomb. Mr. York, look at me. All right, end of the truck, soldiers. All passes and furloughs canceled. Eric. All passes and furloughs canceled, Sergeant. Back to the field. No, not yet. Yes, now. Short and snappy, Sergeant Moore. Those are orders. Right, sir. So long, Jeep. So long, Mike. Goodbye, Mary. And remember. I'll remember. So long, Mike. Goodbye, Eric. Goodbye, sir. Thanks for everything, Tessa. Goodbye, Eric. So long, Mr. York. Bye, Sarge. Eric! Break it up, Sergeant. You're blocking traffic. Do you think this means... If it does, I'll have the pilot dip his wings. Let's go, Sergeant! Sarge, make it snappy. End of the truck. Here you are, Sergeant. Hey, be careful. Look, strawberry cake. Help yourself. My girl made it. Fried chicken. My girl made that, oh, too. How about a piece of chicken? Go oh, ahead, fellas. Help me. yourself. Make yourselves at home. Uh, you got sisters? Boy, what a family. Oh, boy. That's good. Gee, you lucky guy. Who do I see about an allotment? See the sergeant. This allotment's the good of my family. Fill out your forms. It's already filled out. Okay, Sergeant. Thanks. Hey, you're holding up the parade. Where you been? Signing my allotment over to the family. What family? My family.
come home.